Hello guys, this is Dr. Patrick Price and welcome to the Body Detective Show. And today I have a PowerPoint slide for you today. Hopefully this will be a little bit entertaining. But also I'm going to discuss 20 reasons why your stomach may be hurting. Now a lot of people have stomach pain, digestive issues from one end to the other end. A lot can happen between here and all the way down there I guess. So today I'm going to show you this PowerPoint and hopefully this will help answer some questions for you and help you have some solutions and the idea is we have real solutions guys so i'm dr patrick price and enjoy the powerpoint presentation today uh, please email ask questions and be interactive with us so i can give you all the help that's necessary so here we go guys 20 reasons why your stomach may be hurting okay here we go guys uh so Number one reason why, look at it, gallstones. Almost everybody got some artillery sludge that makes it over to your gallstones. I mean, your gallbladder area, which are gallstones. Now it takes, uh, they're completely undetected until you get about 70% if you look at, say, an x-ray of your stones, guys. All right, this is excess calcium. Everybody has a lot of bio-unavailable calcium floating around. But here you go today while you have stones. Uh, they may be large enough to block your bile duct. Then you have bile duct, that little tube between your liver and your, and your gallbladder. Um, most of the time, this goes undetected until you start having pain. Uh, one of the very distinct pains that you're having gallstone issues is someone's got like an ice pick sticking it right there in your right shoulder blade, especially your right shoulder blade. You pay attention to that. Also, you may have stomach or abdomen pain as well with this. So um, how do you relieve gallstones? I guess... Over my 20 plus years, really almost 30 years in practice now, golly, I must be getting older. Uh, I've learned one thing. You should really, in my opinion, never have a gallbladder removed. Unless it just explodes inside your body, you should have your gall, gallstones flush from your gallbladder. So one thing is perform a liver and gallbladder flush. I can't tell you how many... Uh, gallbladders I have rescued in my life. I should have a t-shirt that says rescuing gallbladders, right? Uh, colon cleansing, colonic irrigations, all stuff that's going to help, but also taking enzymes or some kind of digestive formula along the way to help preventing some kind of buildup. Uh, if you drink really acidic coffee, now I, I tell people to get uh, alkaline, organic coffee today, but if you drink good old like Folger stuff like this community like we had in Louisiana, these kind of coffees are highly acidic, like a pH of three. They actually help clean out the gallbladder. So welcome to drinking coffee that can clean the gallbladder. Here we go. Pancreatitis. Guys, this is pretty serious stuff. It can be serious, especially if it's untreated. Uh, the pancreas gets, uh, gets tired after a while. It gets inflamed and exhausted, just like other organs when it's overuse. The pancreas can actually stop producing its own enzymes. Right? This can lead actually to pancreatic cancer. Now, as you know, when people get pancreatic cancer, they usually don't live very long. Well, of course, in my opinion, uh, they should not be going for a chemotherapy for pancreatitis. They should do high-level enzyme therapy. You should be infusing different, like Myers cocktails, along with these things, as far as taking high-dose enzymes, pancreatic enzymes to be specific. Now, 80% of cases are caused by what? Abuse of alcohol. And so this, the rest can be like gallstones that can cause this. Symptoms are pain in the middle of your back, right? Between the shoulder blades, nausea, abdominal pain. And this should be something that you get onto right away. Uh, once again, colon cleansing, liver gallbladder flushes, but especially a good enzyme protocol. Now, we have had an enzyme protocol around for a long time, and I've seen plenty of these type of cases. As long as we get them early, right away, you start having issues with this, and enzyme therapy will usually clear this up. Natural methods to the rescue once again, guys. GERD. What is GERD? Gastroesophageal reflux disease. What does this mean? Well, the pH in the stomach can become actually, we say it's acidic, but actually it's too alkaline. When you get a very alkaline stomach, it can't digest acidic foods like proteins. Okay, you need, you need a, a very low pH to break down like, say, meat, like chicken, fish, things like that, beef. So the diaphragm starts to contract and you get a reverse peristalsis and it starts getting this sensation up squeezing up the esophagus and literally food can get just stuck in your throat. All right? It's like that sphincter of muscle there in the esophagus. It just gets too contracted. 
uh, the stomach acids flow backwards and up through the esophagus. This is really like an ugly sensation if anybody's ever had this. I've watched the, I actually been in a restaurant where I watch a gentleman thought he's having a heart attack in the bathroom stall. He actually was having a reflux thing. Now this can be manually done to the body to release the spasm with your fingers. But the idea is do some simple things to help clear this up. You can have a chest pain, sore throat, difficulty swallowing, especially, right? But once again, to get it back to intestinal cleansing, probiotics, enzyme therapy, and a pH diet, which means the foods, you know, like a biorhythm diet, eating the foods that match together. Like uh, if you eat a steak and a baked potato, well, these things don't match very well. They don't digest, they literally rot in your gut, right? So you need to eat like a protein and something green, like a salad, anything green vegetables, green beans, green peas. So when you do uh, biorhythm eating, it means eating the foods that go well together. Okay, so let's avoid this all together if we can, guys. Lactose intolerance, anybody out there? Okay, lactose intolerance. Now, the question is, are you really lactose intolerant or are you having a chemical intolerance? That is the question. Uh, people who don't digest dairy products very well, you're missing the enzyme of lactase. So you need lactose type enzymes. Uh, it's the inability to digest the sugar in the milk. Uh, could it be the hormones in the milk? Well, yes, it could. So the idea about the hormones is recumbent bovine growth hormone. That just sounds like something you shouldn't have in your body, right? Well, basically it is recumbent bovine growth hormone. So most countries in the world have outlawed this except the good old USA. For some reason, we think it's good for you. What this does, it makes the cow think the cow is still pregnant. Its body is, uh, is still delivering lots of milk. It's a really terrible thing to do to the cow. Their udders get like huge. You see some of them dragging, dragging the ground in pictures of them. But it makes them just keep producing milk. It's basically a thing about greed, guys. It's not you're not doing an injustice to the animal at all. Now, avoidance is, is probably the best thing you can probably do. But you can also go to goat's milk, almond milk, rice milk, hemp milk. There's a lot of other options that you, you can use. But if you don't have the, uh, let's say you drink raw milk. Raw milk without the bovine growth hormone would definitely help too. And of course, when you when you heat the milk, you know, we heat the milk supposedly to remove any kind of bacteria, things like that. This basically removes all the good stuff, all the all the proteins, enzymes, and stuff. The colostrum is what they call it. It's in the milk. And so basically you're getting basically sugar water. So taking the enzymes, doing the flushes, and especially doing a lymphatic detox, that's very good for lactose intolerance, besides just avoiding. Because you can take somebody, go to another country. And uh, get dairy products in another country that doesn't have this hormone, and they can eat the cheese and things. Dairy products are just fine, so it's not always that you have an issue with the milk itself. Medication side effects. Okay, you look here. I see painkillers. Right, the painkillers basically make your gut become very acidic, creates constipation, ulcers, death of new muscle cell growth. Right, muscle relaxers. These also upset the stomach, nausea, vomiting, ulcers, things like this. Antidepressants have been known to cause digestive issues. Okay? The list goes on and on and on. Okay? But most of all, antibiotics. If you take someone who's been taking a list of antibiotics for a while, they basically have destroyed the good bacteria of the gut. One dose of antibiotics can destroy your gut, your gut geome for like a year. It may take a year to develop your stomach system back in balance and harmony once again. So that's why you need probiotics. Um, Digestive aids. Now, prescription stomach aids actually create stomach problems in long-term use. Like Nexium, Zantac, Prilosec, all these things you hear about on TV. These actually can create bone loss. There's plenty of studies that's been out for years that show hip fractures and things like this come because these, these prescription drugs, the side effect is loss of calcium from the bones. So you basically, your hip will just start to dissolve itself. So guys, get away from the prescription drugs. Take them if you just absolutely have to in the beginning, but don't stay on them for long-term use. They're not designed for that. Once you get into learning other aids and ways to recover your gut, then you won't need these medications again. Okay, Diverticulitis. This is a, if you're from Louisiana, you probably have this. This is like a Louisiana thing. Uh, years of bad foods. Now what I mean by that, is the foods that taste so wonderful, all those nice fried foods and gumbos and jambalayas, all the stuff I love so much, these things can cause inflammation in the, in the intestines, in the colon. 
So what happens is when you start having um, bad food, like all the corn, that uh, basically the, the oils, the bad oils, cause an inflammatory reaction to the gut, guys. But what happens when you get constipated, uh, you'll find that years of straining from the constipation will start to begin to actually stretch and create these diverticuli, these little pockets along the colon. And this little pockets in the colon basically leaves it where you get food particles stuck in there. And boy, talk about pain. I watch, uh, I watch family members uh, suffer for years with us to I figured out how to get rid of it. But it's years of bad eating habits. It, it's not just something done overnight, guys. Crash diets, eating, the not eating. If you do intermittent fasting, this is probably uh, something you shouldn't do if you've been diagnosed with diverticulitis, the off and on eating. Uh, you can have gas, bloating, blood in the stool, vomiting, tenderness in the abdomen, increased pain. I watched my mom have very intense pain for this years ago, guys, from having diverticulitis. Now look at the treatment that I have listed for you there. Aloe vera juice, chamomile, slippery elm bark, marshmallow root, uh, Amazon herbs from the rainforest. They have some very good fiber products from there. There's ozone therapy. So ozone, you're taking ozone to a powdered formulas like our oxy detox. There's ozone you have infused to a vein. There's different ways to do this as well. Um, colonic irrigations, enzymes, probiotics, protein drinks that you sip on all day long, like making a smoothie. Now, what you got to avoid is nuts and seeds. If you have a little pocket and you eat like some uh, nuts and seeds, guess what those little bitty nuts and seeds do? They just get there and they sit inside that little pocket and create lots of inflammation, which in return creates lots of pain. Then you get into the liver and gallbladder flushes. So diverticulitis, very common condition, guys. Gluten intolerance. Is it gluten intolerance? Or is it the wheat today is not the wheat of yesterday? The wheat today has definitely been uh, hybridized in several ways. It is, it is not even identifiable by your gut. When you get this genetically modified wheat, it goes into your intestines and your body looks at this going, what the heck is this? I can't identify it because it's made from several different formulas. You don't have wheat like the other day. And now the wheat itself today, I, I could go down a whole list of all the different chemicals and proteins and, and enzymes that were sprayed on wheat. It's not, it's not like it used to in the old days. So once they cut the wheat, they put it and they let it set in the vault and they let wheat uh, age on its own. Well, now they use chemical aging, not the old way. And then they look at all this glyphosate that's loaded. I mean, triple, quadruple sprayed in the wheat. Uh, it's not just the wheat, guys. It's what's been done to the wheat. And, and there's plenty of books out there. One book, I forgot the guy's name. He says, wheat has been weaponized. What it means, it blocks T3, T4 receptors in your thyroid. So wheat today can cause hypothyroidism. The genetic modification doesn't help along with that. So what does it do to the body? Oh, inflammation all the way down from one end to the other end. The gluten intolerance is painful, it's bloating, gassy, all those uh, things you talk about bad with the intestines themselves. So the first thing is to avoid it. Like a lot of like the lactose intolerance earlier, avoidance. So gluten-free products, eat those for about six months, see how your body does. And once again, you got to be careful. The gluten-free products can have lots of sugar and lots of other additives themselves. So that may not always be the solution. So make sure you find what gluten-free foods that you can eat. And then it comes back to the good old, use your uh, oxy detox, colonic irrigations, liver gallbladder flushes, enzymes, probiotics. Now, um, almond, you're looking at different, the almond mix. You drink almond, you eat almonds, as far as the, uh, like a peanut butter, right? You see those, a lot of the stores have those now. That can replace a lot of wheat products. It's just if you have a high yeast condition, uh, almonds may not be the best choice because of the calcium oxalates, but that's a subject to talk about later. But the first thing, guys, gluten intolerance is avoidance and then follow it from there. Endometriosis, a lot of young girls have been diagnosed with this over the years. Very painful condition for women. Now, uh, they say as part of the when the, the fetus is developing, had develops in certain stages and different things happen, go wrong in the development of that fetus, right? But Hilda Clark is one of the ladies that came along and says that is exactly wrong, okay? And what she means by that is with endometriosis, it's more of a parasitic type condition. And so before I go into that, pain in the back, 
painful sex, intestinal pain, painful bowel movements, constipation, diarrhea, all because of this endometriosis. But Hilda Clark says if you have parasites, and these parasites are in the, say, uterus of a woman, well, imagine if this uterus uh, tissue is inside the parasites, and it's, it's feeding and eating off your body, and it has part of the uterine tissue inside of itself, and then it bores through the uterus and ends up in your small intestine, ends up in your colon, which is what parasites do. They move through your body. And so if it has these tissues in there, imagine during your menstruation cycle, when you have uterine tissue begin to react to your menstrual cycle. So that's why she said as a theory, you can have pain in other parts of your body because of the uterine tissue that the parasites have been ingesting. Now, I've come to notice that when we do parasite cleanses on young ladies with the endometriosis, it tends to clear up. So I'd say she's definitely onto something. So a parasite cleanse is in your near future. Now, hand in hand also is candida, the yeast issue that so many people are having. So I would suggest also a candida protocol. Uh, hormone testing, test your hormones, find out. Saliva testing is one of the best and find out where your hormones are. So it gives you a good idea what's happening there as well. So guys, the big three with endometriosis or any kind of intestinal issue is candida cleanse, parasite cleanse, and a toxic metal cleanse. Thyroid challenges, pretty big issue today. We talked about that with the wheat just now. Thyroid is a regulator of the body. It regulates your digestive system as well, not just your, your temperature of your body, things like this. It is the regulator of the whole body. Just like your kidneys are the regulator of your, your fluids, the thyroid is a regulator of your hormones. Now, hyperthyroidism, if you look at the paper, can cause diarrhea and abdominal pain. A slow thyroid, hypothyroid, can cause constipation and gas. Right. What are other thyroid conditions that you feel with the body? Dry skin, hair loss, digestive issues, weight gain, low energy, and of course, depression. Very common thing. So a body can have imbalances in the thyroid, not just because of the wheat like we discussed, but an iodine deficiency, a mineral deficiency, and toxic metals. There is a wonderful uh, jet fuel that they use as an herbicide. It, yes, it is used as a jet fuel called perchlorate. When you do a urine test and you find out that you have high amounts of perchlorate, you can almost guess that you're not receiving the iodine to your thyroid like you should. And then, of course, a lot of emotional issues end up with the thyroid. And this is usually things being unhappy with your career. So, guys, get the thyroid checked out and let's find the real ways to clear up the thyroid condition. Uh, parasites, another reason your stomach can be bothering, like we mentioned earlier. Absolutely. Uh, we think we're like a third world country today from all the parasites involved in people. But first of all, what is a parasite? An organism that lives in or on another organism and benefits by deriving nutrients from the host at the host expense. So basically it's like somebody you invited home for lunch that's eating lunch with you, but really you didn't invite them. So they came in to eat and they did not have your permission. So the thing about parasites is they can affect everything, your sleep, your hormones, your emotions. I mean, the list goes on and on. Uh, I'll give you some lists right here. Digestive issues, of course, we're talking about the stomach, right? Itching, bloating, bloating during moon cycles, new moon, full moon. New moon is, is uh, round worms and tapeworms are the full moon. Of course, they cause skin problems, low energy, immune insufficiency, hormone imbalances, and headaches. So the very first thing to do with a parasites, if you think you have parasites, guys, is to starve them. How do you starve a parasite? It's like starving yeast. You've got to remove sugar out of your diet. Okay. There's other food choices to make, like all the starchy foods. You can start there as well. But think of like wheat. Think of sugar and think of dairy. Those three things with parasites and candida, you always can remove the first starve them. Cuddle Clark designed a zapper to run the frequency to help kill parasites. And of course, getting back to your parasite and yeast protocols. Moving right along, guys. Now, appendicitis. Now, I've actually had two patients within all the years of being practiced that actually, even after cleansing, they still had appendicitis issues. Two. Two after all these years. And now, one, I really think it's because they could have went further in their, their colon cleansing. And what I mean by that is besides doing the oxy and the other cleansers that we use is they could actually went and got a colonic irrigation, which are quite more intense and is a deeper cleaning of the colon from one end of the colon to the other end. 
So that would be one thing definitely with appendicitis to avoid appendicitis is getting a deep cleaning of the colon. Your signs and symptoms are low back pain and a key one is belly button pain. Nausea, fever, chills, gas, bloating, painful bowel movements, and just painful movements in general. You get tenderness in the belly, diarrhea, uh, and relief by having a bowel movement. That's always another tall tail sign. And of course, a swollen belly. Now I've had patients also have a, uh, a ruptured appendicitis and walk around during the day knowing that, hey, I just don't feel good. And basically they had a ruptured appendicitis where they could actually die from. Now, once it actually is really swollen, and of course, if it ruptures, that's an emergency condition, is usually a surgery to remove the appendix, right? But the main thing is keep your, inte your intestines clean. It's not that hard. The OxyDetox product we have, guys, is every week you should be cleaning out your colon and taking probiotics. Garlic and oregano, good natural antibiotics to take for the body. Of course, you can always try different fibers to see what works for you. The rainforest herbs like Sande de Drago and others are very powerful for the colon. But don't forget, the very bottom there, colonic irrigations. <clears throat> Ulcers. Ulcers most common from the side effects of medications. Anybody who's taking lots of medications can develop a stomach ulcer. Painkillers, muscle relaxers, of course, aspirins can really irritate the coating of the stomach, the lining of the stomach, uh, antibiotics, and uh, other meds. So, but mainly you'll see people do high amounts of stress. When they have high amounts of stress, guys, the stomach acids are, are going to just go insane. It's like when you want your body to have a better immune system, you want your immune system to actually go up. You have to have your adrenal gland function go down. But what happens is the adrenal glands are going up, and so your immune system is going down. Those don't go the same direction. So if you want your stomach to feel better, you definitely got to take actions to have your adrenal gland to stop working overtime. So two types of ulcers. You have the stomach ulcer, which is the gastritis. And I say on here the drink uh, milk, the milk test. If you have gastritis, the milk test, it will irritate your stomach when you drink milk. If you have duodenum, the intestinal ulcer, it actually relieves it when you drink milk. So other treatments that will help you naturally, apple cider vinegar, baking soda formulas, which is like just drinking baking soda and water. Uh, of course, looking back to your food combinations, what foods digest together, eating small meals all during the day, just snacking during the day, and then getting into the adrenal formulas to actually have the adrenal glands calm down and learning things like Tai Chi, Qigong, meditation, yoga, things to relax the body and especially your mind. Okay, moving right along. Sugarless gum. Just when you thought it was better for you because it's sugarless, don't be fooled. No sugar, so it must be good for you, right? Wrong. Okay, you look at all these artificial sweeteners, they're loaded with chemicals. Aspartame itself, I think it had up to 3,000 chemicals in aspartame. And it, today, it is hidden under so many different names, it is still placed in your food. If it comes in a box, there's a good chance you have these artificial sweeteners in there. So you want to avoid these like the plague. So I put st statistics about 59 people in the United States chew gum, and I ran 82%, Saudi Arabia 79%. Now, when I, I first put this down, I don't remember actually why I did this, but I gave you percentages to show you that people in other countries chew more gum than us. I think that's why my original intent was. But when they chew gum in other countries, it's made with real, uh, real sugar. Not just a cane sugar, but they have the Arabic gums, have the Arabic sugars too. Arabic gum is uh, much healthier for you. I don't know if they, you have that type around here or not, but basically, if it says sugarless, just don't use it, is my best opinion for you. Uh, when you chew gum, it increases your, your, your craving for junk food. It can trigger TMJ, the tightening of the jaw. It makes you swallow more air. So all these uh, other colon issues you may have, it can give you tooth damage. Uh, you see at the bottom of the screen, I have a sheep sheep products like lanolin, um, castrium, that's the uh, glands of the beaver. I call it the beaver butt gum. Okay, that's my joke because it comes from the glands around the beaver's rear mixed with the beaver's urine. Lovely, but it's in a lot of the, uh, the sugarless gums. Uh, mercury fillings releases mercury, mercury vapors. Use peppermint essential oils, guys. You want to freshen your breath? 
Just get a little bottle of peppermint oil, put it on the back of your tongue a tiny bit, and that'll freshen your breath as good as anything. So get away from the sugarless gums. Stress. Anybody have any stress? Not me. So when you have huge amounts of stress, you need to make sure you have huge amounts of playtime. Work hard, play hard. Don't be trapped in your home. Get outside, get some sunlight on your face, get your feet in the dirt, get your feet in the grass, feel the earth again. Uh, a lot of us working from home now. Now it's time to make sure and spend some outside time. Like I said earlier, high stress, low immune system. These two just work opposite of each other. So physical, chemical, emotional, spiritual support is all needed for the immune system and you to recover. So guys, manage your stress. Very important in life. Food poisoning. Anybody had any of that? So what's the most common food poison culprit? Anybody know? Anybody know? Okay, I'll get to that. So how do you get food poisoning? Well, just go out of the country and just eat with the, the local people eating. And that's one good way to get it. But the idea is even in they're washing certain vegetables in certain countries, I mean, here in Texas or right next to Mexico, if you don't know what water they're cleansing these vegetables with, Montezuma's Revenge. Anybody heard of that before? Wow. I've had it once and uh, it is not a fun thing to have, guys. So E. coli is also another thing to watch out for. Um, most restaurants in town had beef tapeworms on their counters, the eggs. That's why you need a good acidic gut. Your pH in your stomach needs to be like a 1.5 to kill the egg. It's like the filter. Your stomach is the filter for the body. So what comes in your body has to go through the stomach, right? So that's how you kill it. Signs of food poison, guys, within 30 minutes. Wham, man, it's a, you, if you've ever had this stuff, I mean, I went on a plane one time to go give a talk in Florida and I, and I ate some... Um, some food at the airport and by the time I got off the plane I was felt like I was half alive right and so it hits you like right away the bloating the extreme abdominal pain boy it's really something else and of course I mentioned Montezuma's Revenge again vomiting sweating headaches confusion if you have your uh if you're traveling you should have some travel aids that you bring with you even in the states guys the oxy detox I mentioned over and over our our oxy product is wonderful for that First sign of food poisoning, I'll take 20 plus pills of Oxy Detox to help flush it out of the body. Charcoal is good. Bentonite clay is good. Things that absorb the chemicals and toxins in the body. So first sign of that is what you go for is charcoal, clay, things like that. Uh, so, so what is the number one culprit is salad bars. Okay. Mayonnaise. All these salad dressings, guys, these, these go bad quickly. So if you're going to eat any kind of salad bar or salad dressing, make sure you check how old it is. If it's uh, been cooled off, it hasn't been at room temperature too long. And uh, you will avoid getting a massive case of food poisoning. Inflammatory bowel disease. Okay? So let's just talk about that for just a moment. So think about it. inflammatory, which means what? It's swollen. It's inflamed. Okay. As soon as something enters the body, the intestines, right away you can get bloating in your small intestines, which in turn you'll have bloating and swelling in the colon, which is the bowel, right? So Crohn's disease includes the mouth all the way to the rectum. Crohn's disease, when you mention this condition, it's the whole from beginning to end gets inflamed. Ulcerative colitis mainly involves the lower part of the colon. Now, one case that makes this a little different is you'll have bleeding of the rectum, you have blood in your stools, and that's ulcerative colitis, right? But you also have nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, weight loss, gas, bloating, swelling. So remember, the weight loss is a tall tale sign. Now, I call this shark feeding is one culprit of this. You ever people who shark feed, they bite and swallow just like the shark does? You watch those shows and it eats the seal. It doesn't really chew its food well, does it? So... Don't be like the shark and bite. You must sit there and chew your food and get the enzymes in the mouth, begin the process of digestion. So treatment can be, uh, meds can help an attack, right? But they're not good, once again, like I said, for long-term care. Now me, I've always used, because of the, especially the business I'm in, because of my education before I went to school, was using like apple cider vinegar, baking soda, things like this to help calm the intestinal tract first. Remember, the colon, the bentonite clay we talked about earlier, but you need to make sure and go through 
a good cleansing protocol of parasites, of candida, and things like this, because these are other reasons you could have. Because think about this. Anytime you have any colon issue, any intestinal issue, there's always going to be parasites and yeast. They're like brothers are going to be there together. So you have to go to the protocols to really eliminate this condition. Because if you have inflammation in the body, welcome to America. Inflammation and pathogens. Too many pathogens in the body. This is also a nice recipe for what we call an autoimmune disease. And basically an autoimmune disease is not a big mystery to me. It's really quite simple. Even Dr. Klinghart, the German scientist, says it is pathogens. You got too many bad bugs in the body and you had inflammation in the gut. You have to see what's causing that inflammation. Now, when you come to the colon, it is an emotional area for a lot of people. This is unresolved issues with your mother and your father, one of them or both. It doesn't matter if you have a wonderful relationship with your mother, wonderful relationship with your father. Maybe they passed away when you're younger and you didn't, there's something you just didn't get to say to them, something you didn't get to share with them. But also it can be very simple issues that still bother you now. They just go unresolved. So remember, since many, many years, the colon represents those issues with your mother and your father. So find out what those are and resolve them. Okay. Irritable bowel. Well, I'm just very irritated. Okay. Irritable. So some call this the spastic colon. It's similar to the slide before that you guys just saw bloating, the swelling, the gas, loss of appetite. Uh, it's induced though, this is usually from the antibiotics. So if you've had lots of antibiotic use, you can almost bet this is the culprit for this one. Um, look at the oils you're using to eat food from, the corn oils, anything that says corn, just avoid it like the plague once again. All the seed oils, really, which you should be away from. The coconut oils, the avocado oils. Now, if you're cooking something on low heat, not going to extremely high temperatures, Use olive oil. Olive oil is just not good at high heats. You can cook eggs, low heat on your stove, if you're eating eggs, and cook them in olive oil. The high fructose corn syrup, worst thing for you, jams up your liver. The wheat, the gluten in the wheat, and of course we talk about the glyphosate. The, gly the wonderful glyphosate, this is so strange how it showed how it's damaged so many people worldwide. It's in every water stream in the world. It can be transferred through the mother's placenta to their child causes neurological damage, gets into the DNA, alters the DNA, on and on. This is the most horrible chemical on the planet now. But yet, you can go down to your Home Depot, and there it is sitting right on the counters. Now, if there was an herb out there that made three people get diarrhea, the FDA would immediately go and goes, we need to save the public and remove this natural herb. It's dangerous. But look at the glyphosate. I've gone to numerous seminars and seen how much damage this has done worldwide i mean this is this is something that just bewilders me that it's still for sale right down the street at home depot so guys i don't know what it's going to take unless we just start turning purple or something but it is damaging people from lifetimes to come it's damaging your children it's damaging their children it's in your dna so getting back to the irritable bowel is you need pro if you take antibiotics you should automatically know this already. Supposedly, those of you who are my patients, you should know probiotics should be taken not at the same time. But if you take an antibiotic in the morning, you should take a probiotics at bedtime. You have to replenish the good bacteria in your gut right away because they're being killed off. Okay? Several probiotics. There is a soil-based probiotics. Uh, they're very powerful. Bacillus subtilis is like one of those bacteria on steroids. Very strong, powerful one. Okay? Um, you have to basically find out which probiotics work better for you and mix and match and never really stay on the same one all the time. Okay? So the main thing this takes, guys, is like you see right here, to get better, is patience. And like when someone starts with me who has a serious bowel condition and they come to me the next day after starting their, their treatment with me and go, uh, why am I not better? And that's why you see in parentheses at the bottom, I say boot to the head because it's been one day. Okay, <laughs> Have a little patience. Give it time. Your body can reverse its condition given the right tools. Of course, there's cancer. Do I need to say any more? Uh, probably this clip, I don't even need to say it, but it's gotten so prevalent. We hear the word cancer. I, I asked my mom back home, 
they didn't know people had cancer when she was a kid growing up. Now, of course, some doctors will defend that by saying, oh, it's because they couldn't diagnose it. I don't believe that for a second. Cancer is given to us by the foods and genetic modifications and the glyphosates and all these chemicals. Uh, I don't even want to mention the other one, so I don't get taken off YouTube here or my channels I'm on, but it is given to you. So one in three people are developing cancer these days. That means one, two, three. Sitting in the room, someone's going to get a form of cancer. And extreme weight loss is one of the main signs you look for in the beginning. So let's say, hey, Dr. Price, I'm going to go uh, get this cancer treatment. I'm going to go get my chemo and radiation since this seems to be such an a MK ultra in our brain that we need to do. I would say, I want you to hold off on removing both your breast and, and part of your kidneys and whatever in the surgery. And first of all, do a candida protocol. So if you go through and, and remove as best you can the pathogens as far as knock down the population, even a parasite cleanse, but especially candida, go to a candida protocol. And then if you decide to still go get this type of a treatment, that is one of the best things you can do for yourself because you now have an immune system that can withstand the more poisons they're going to be putting in your body. Okay? So if you want to survive better at, and not say, that, well, the cancer killed them. Well, actually, the cancer treatment may have killed you. Okay? That's what we don't really talk, want to talk about, but that is the elephant in the room is have your immune system squeaky clean before you go to treatment, guys. This isn't hard to do. Don't be rushed into something. Take your time. Be patient. Think things through before you go do something so tremendous to the body like a chemotherapy. Okay? So as you read below, I've said other things about cleansing and treatments that I use that are natural therapies. This is something that's easily available many places today, guys. You can go get plenty of type of ozone infusions. You can go get uh, Myers cocktails infusions, high dose vitamin C. There's so many other therapies you can use today. Unless you come in with stage four, stage five, you can still naturally treat yourself. In this country, from what I remember, we still have the right to choose, do we not? Okay. So remember, you don't have a gun to your head telling you what to do, but still, as I always say, don't let fear guide you in the next decision that you make. Not just about your medical condition. Don't let fear guide you in any decisions you make about your life. Take a breath, step back, sleep on it if you can, and then make a decision. Never make a decision out of fear. Okay. Tooth infections? Yes, they can cause stomach issues, guys. You see me saying a Dr. Price event was a Dr. Price, a dentist who would take an infected tooth, crush it, cleanse it with the different technologies they had back then to really cleanse supposedly the bacteria out of that tooth and then put it in a rabbit under the fur and the rabbit would die. Well, because no matter how much you cleanse a tooth, it's still going to have bacteria and it's still going to kill the old rabbit trick that they used to do, put it under the fur. And so tooth infections can lead to many other things. You must take good care of your teeth, guys. Uh, root canals is some of the worst things because once you expose the canals that run under your teeth and connect all the teeth to each other to the open air uh, and then you pack it down once you open that tooth up and expose it, you just turn that aerobic bacteria that's inside there to an anaerobic by closing off the hole and now it's not exposed to air so because an anaerobic bacteria. And so this can cause conditions later and you know your teeth are linked to all parts of your body. Your teeth are linked to all parts of your spine, each vertebra, the link to all parts of your organs and glands. There are, she there are sheets that show you the links, there are your teeth linked to all parts of your body. So the alternatives are, is we mentioned MMS, the chlorine dioxide. Dentists are finally using this today. Uh, if you go online and you type in MMS, it's going to say, oh, this is horrible. You're going to die. Don't take this. But if you type in chlorine dioxide, which is the chemical name, oh, it's the most wonderful thing in the world. So it just matters on how you search online when you're looking for this stuff. But chlorine dioxide has been around for a while. It's very safe to drink, not just cleansing your teeth. It'll really kill the bacteria deep down. But you can also drink this stuff, guys. And most of you know what I'm talking about when I talk about the MMS. It is a solution to kill lots of different pathogens in your body. But it's a good way to clean your teeth and cause and stop from causing a tooth infection, which leads to some kind of 
stomach disorder. Okay. So oil pulling also, if you don't know what that is, oil pulling, last thing I'll talk about here, is to put some, say, uh, oregano, oil, not oregano oil, I'm um, sorry, uh, olive oil. Just get olive oil, sassafras oil, or the... Uh, I've just lost for a second. Which oils? <laughs> okay. Olive oil. There. Ali. Olive oil. These things in the morning you can do for 10, 15, 20 minutes is do oil pulling. Hold it in your mouth, slush around really well, and clean the bacteria out of your mouth with oils. So oil pulling. Been around for a very, very long time, guys. Electromagnetic frequencies. Yes. <clears throat> we don't think about this, but these kind of... Uh, Frequencies, like the 5G you hear so much today, radio frequencies are, are very toxic for the body. It's, it's, it's become another elephant in the room. We're all surrounded by it. Now they got the towers put up. Even all the scientists go, it's going to kill you, fry your brain, do these things. Well, let's put them up anyway. All right? It doesn't matter what we think. It just matters what the, what, the, the, what the dollar bill says. Whoever's got the most money wins in this case. And so if it's up to me, there'd be no 5G. Well, I can play more video games faster, yes, and also your teeth can fall out from excess radiation. As we already have a microwave in our house, we already have cell phones and TVs and Bluetooth. We have surrounded by sine waves of radiation already. 5G to that is because 2.4 gigahertz sends a wave of energy through your body at such a high frequency. This goes next to 30G, 60G, which is your military uses, which are very damaging for you in every way. According to Dr. Klinkhart, I mentioned him again, it increases the growth rate of pathogens. Let me repeat that again. Electromagnetic energies surging through your body, coming from your devices, coming from the 5G towers, will increase the growth rate of pathogens in your body. It will make it worse. It makes it better for fungus and molds. Right? Everybody get this? So you need protection from it. You need devices on your phone. You need devices on your computer. You need devices on your body. Uh, you can paint this. They have that paint. You can paint your room inside your home now to shield yourself from these radio frequencies. There's all kinds of ways to do it. It just matters on how extreme you want to go. And me, I'm pretty safe in my home because I've done a lot of those things. But also we have uh, certain devices coming out soon enough that you'll be able to protect yourself from it because this can lead to a stomach disorder. You can have nausea and digestive disorders and looking for the answer and not realize it's radiation poisoning. Now, the, the idea is drinking uh, your, your iodine drops, right? All these type of iodine products today protects your thyroid from absorbing the radiation, just like the military, they use potassium iodine. This protects your thyroid from absorbing all this radiation. So your thyroid can function and you can function better. So don't forget to add some kind of iodine drops in, uh, in your water now and then and make sure you have sufficient in your body to protect yourself. Because when you, when you do Tai Chi, Qigong, these things enhance your biofield. It makes your biofield bigger. When your biofield is bigger around your body, you are protected. So remember that. Bigger biofield, bigger aura, protection from radiation, protection from bacteria, viruses, things like that. So perform an activity that will help. Now I just mentioned this, STT, STPP. Uh, that's not the racing fuel. That is sodium tripolyphosphate. That is what they spray on shrimp out in the ocean to make it heavier. And why would someone do that to your shrimp before you eat them? Because they make more money when the shrimp are heavier. You saw my little phrase, them there shrimp just don't look right. Because you stick them in the pan to cook your shrimp and suddenly they shrink twice that size. Well, that is a good sign that you have STPP sprayed all over your shrimp. Wonderful. I would just chunk them in the, in the, in the garbage right there. So those are other things that cause digestive disorders, guys. So guys, if, you don't, if you're not on my email list now, you can simply text 22828. And in your message area, put in HIWC, and it'll prompt you to, to put in your email address. And I, I appreciate everybody listening today to 20 things that, that can hurt in your stomach, reasons your stomach can be hurting. And I hope this PowerPoint reaches many of you. I hope you enjoy it. And please email me. 
contact us on Facebook, our YouTube site. We have our YouTube site as well, guys. Join us there, link up, and I'm here for you. You got questions, I have answers. Just don't be in the dark and hide and just expect it's all going to go away. You must be proactive today to keep your health. Don't be like I see in my office every day, these 20 and 30 year olds already having diseases that they should have when they're an old man or an old woman. Don't be one of these people. Fix yourself now. Maintain yourself. It's very, very simple to maintain your health. I'm going to come back off my screen here. Guys, please take care of your health. I can't tell you enough. It's very important that you stay proactive with yourself because who else is going to do it? If you've got to fix your own meals, find a way to fix your meals. Get an Instapot. Very easy to fix your meals this way. Find a way to cook for yourself. Stop eating fast food as of yesterday. Do not eat this stuff. Make change one at a time. Get cleaner water. Get reverse osmosis. Get structured water. Find better ways to put food and liquids in your body so you don't spend your life, your retirement. You say, wow, I made my living. I made my retirement. Now I can go with my life. No, you'd be like some people spending the rest of your life seeing doctors every day. I have patients, they spend their retirement Monday through Friday, visiting doctors. Don't be that person, guys. Take care of your health now. Your body will take care of you. You'll live a long life, happy life. Enjoy your family and your friends. I'm Dr. Patrick Price, and I hope you enjoyed the PowerPoint, and I'll see you next time around.